And welcome back, everybody, to another edition of Sparkling Tuna Cup. This is number seven. And I'm, of course, your host, Live VIP. And with me is the lovely, the beautiful, the white. It is Chase. <laughs> you make me sound like I'm Gandalf. <laughs> it is Chase the White. He is here. Yes, indeed, I am here. Hello, lights. And we have a PVT to start. Oh yeah, welcome everyone to our weekly open tournament. Exclamation mark be in the chat if you want to have a look at the lovely brackets. And oh boy, oh boy, is it stacked. But also, we're missing a couple of the heavy hitters. You know, this week, there's no Keen, there's no True. The Polish Protosses aren't here either. That kind of makes me excited because now, like, I don't know, man. Like, this could go any way. I, I don't know how this, is, this tournament is going to end up. Yeah, I was gonna say like it's a little disappointing not to have the the old guard kind of sign up. You know, the players who normally get to the, the semi-finals and finals, but I smell opportunity for some hungry players who did sign up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, speaking of one, <laughs> here we go. I just realised his name. Um, spawning in the top right position. It is our Protoss player representing Team GP. Um, I'm not all, I'm not sure where they're from. It's Curry. <laughs> He's Korean. <laughs> uh, it's a I Korean thought team. Team GP, but Rex. Yeah, but Rex is on GP. He's, he's Taiwanese. Shaking my head, shaking my head, man. I love it. I love it. What you, <laughs> what you were smelling before was an opportunity. It was, it was this player right here. Um, but sporting in. <laughs> <It> actually, <won. laughs> the bottom left hand corner of Glittering Ashes LE for the first time in a long time. He's been on a hiatus, but he has signed up for Nation Wars. He is here representing the Cranky Ducklings, the Peruvian Terran. It is Neo. Oh! Oh my god! Uh oh, the RNG! The RNG! The RNG! Oh, oh, oh the man. SCV! No, puppy! No! no. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Like, yeah, get away! That is not worth it. Has he killed two? Oh, it killed one per SCV? Mm -hmm. um, one, one. Oh my god, oh my god, yes. Yeah, it's a. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's a bit of a rough start here. Uh huh. Light. Yes. I'm seeing a 2 one, one. I'm I'm, a, I'm an expert at one build. Uh-huh. And when I say expert, I mean that term very loosely. Yes. Um, When I do that build, this is what I, I try and aim to see. So could we see a 2 one, one by people in here? Do you do 2 one, one in TVP? Game point. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> you have some time to answer my question. I do. I so when I when I looked up my two on one guide, I found I found a website from four years ago. Mm -hmm. You can do a two on one in TVP, uh -huh. but it's not as effective as in TVZ. So mm -hmm. it's possible. It could be a, a meta build. You know, maybe to throw something off. But um, yeah, I'm I'm not, I'm not sure. Yeah, we'll yeah. Have to see. I'm not entirely sure either. Just like, I mean, mm -hmm. just, just like Neo has to see his oatmeal. <laughs> <laughs> So, fun fact to everyone, and everyone who was in our Discord server knows, Neo woke up uh, just as the tournament was starting. He literally just woke up, and I guess he put, like, his oatmeal on the stove or in the microwave or something. Um, that's why it took us a little bit to start uh, our first series as well, because Neo was getting breakfast ready, I guess, and I, he may just, like, decide to eat during while he's playing, like a Chad. Uh <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah yeah i mean shout out to all the north americans and latin americans that signed up for this tournament because this is not like an ideal start time for that region yeah no, this is it's kind of a it feels a very special niche i think um the cranky darkings you light and Korea have filled out here um this time zone is it's not only available to korean players but um mainly like the the sea region it's also quite sea friendly mm -hmm. so it, it's, it's it's great to see players who are more international who are hungry you know at the first thing we don't see a Kane, don't see a Byun. we see these players who are dedicated enough and maybe if they can you know they can go deep in this bracket without these these heavy hitters at the top so mm -hmm. um yeah <laughs> Yeah. But first, check the oatmeal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the last thing we want is the apartment to catch fire, you know? Um, <laughs> that's not 
Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, or, or you know, or burn your oatmeal. You know, you gotta, you gotta have a, a strong breakfast. That's, that's the bigger thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Keep it safe. Keep it safe. Screw the kitchen, <laughs> but the oatmeal though. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. But here we go. We're gonna get back into it. Curry. And Pipplin. I'm, I'm gonna call Neo Pipplin so much just because of his name, but I'll do my best. Oh my god, that's not even how no. you say it. It's Pipilin. Pipilin. What did I say? Pipplin. <laughs> god, god damn. Oh my god. We had this problem last time with, with my. My it's like Pippin. It's Pippin. like P it's like you know Lord of the Rings. You know, like you know, right? Pippin. You've seen. You've seen. But there's a, there's an I and an L in the way. It's not Pippin. It, exactly. So you just you got to sneak it in. Pilly. There. It's Pilly Pilly. Okay, take it or leave it. <laughs> but um, light. Actually, this is looking like it may be a medevac drop of some sort. Do you reckon? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Well, there's a couple of important things that have happened this game that we didn't really get to touch on. One, Curry, of course, was being very annoying across the map with his initial probe. Um, he did kind of force a really awkward response, and now Neo was basically one basing it up. And now he also revealed all of these Marines, so he's kind of showing his hand a little bit here. Um, again, obviously, Curry hasn't seen the main base, but, you know, seeing all these Marines is, is a bit of a tell. Yeah, it is, especially when you're on one base, it, it can be, when you see that, um, the reactor on the barracks, so, mm. um, oh, so that hopefully going to get away, but I, I don't really want Pip, Pip, oh no, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna say no, <laughs> I don't want Neo, this is a bit risky, when you're going for a one base kind of timing, you want all the firepower you can get, mm. so, um, yeah, just gonna maybe hold the ramp, which makes sense, maybe disallow that scouting information, but he actually placed his factory and, um, extra barracks out of vision, so... Yes. But this is a good shade by Stephen Curry. It is a really good shade. Again, he's just confirming whether or not there is a natural base. Also, looking at the vision of Stephen Curry, he does spot the tech lab, doesn't see much else. Um, so, like, there is a world where maybe there is a CC on the high ground, but I feel like he, for the most part, has ruled that out. And he's also doing something a little bit wild as well. He has teched up all the way to a dark shrine. Yeah, this is quite an intelligent kind of um, response here because we know when you're on just one base, you've only got one base worth of scans and you're going to be fully focused on getting as much attacking firepower as possible. Oh. So I really like this DT push here. Yeah, I love it as well, but there's a Viking coming across the map and it's actually going to cross swords with the Warpism. Please! Oh, he finds it! Oh. <laughs> Nothing shoots He up. does indeed find it. Is that, and the DT actually going to work on the Marines here. How many scans do we have? We've got, it's like one at the moment, 40 oh. energy for a second. This is looking a bit scary for Neo. Yeah, it really is. He needs to like just just gather that energy as best he can. But the problem is he's only working off of one orbital right now, and there are just DTs all over the place. Marines are falling left and right. That war prism is being cleaned up, but again, th these DTs are being so annoying. Yeah, no, especially, and this is slowing down this push so much, and every time he uses a scan, he can just warp in another DT, he's got two DTs at his own home, and he's got one coming to the main as well, is he gonna get the wall off Neo? He's got uh, a lot going on, can he cope? Oh my god, well that's... No, <laughs> no he cannot. <laughs> he can't cope. <laughs> GG gets caught. I love the all-in that he was going for, it was great that he caught the war prism, but he just wasn't ready for the one thing, and that was DTs, mate. DTs. It is. Yeah, it wasn't just one thing. It was like it was five of the men, <laughs> five of the one thing. But um, yeah, pretty pretty a simplistic game. Um, I'm not sure. I, I feel like the, the reason we saw like one base kind of drop out of the meta in Legacy is the game is so fast, mm -hmm. and once you're deviating away from the standard and you do something such as this, your opponent, you know, it's kind of it's, it's just it's, it's easy once your opponent scouts and we saw those scouts come in the adepts and confirming the lack of natural and the dts was a really great choice mm -hmm. yeah yeah i I, <laughs> I thought so as well it was very smart very smartly done and oh boy we'll see we'll see how game number two goes here as we do get ready for it meanwhile let me just quickly uh we are in we are in germany right now no we're in norway right now oh my god uh, no, we're sorry. in Norway. Oh, time for Sistromin. Hold on, hold on. Oh, as we quickly, oh. Oh, there we go. As we quickly hop over the servers, we are now in the land of Australia, ah. and we are ready for game two. We are indeed. Oh, whoops! I, I took like a fun in the wrong chat. There we go. Um, yeah, <laughs> there's a little bit of. <laughs> 
little bit of a delay between. We're out of sync, light. You know, yeah. we're not we're not the archons that we normally are. We're not. We're not we couldn't talk about Twilight in, at this rate, but um, we're back on back on track. And um, Berlin Grad is map two. True. You do need. Well, I mean, you do need a Twilight Council if you want to make icons. Is this our Twilight Council? <laughs> Does Norway not support the infrastructure for Twilight? I don't know, man, but either way, we are back. And here we go. Spawning in that top left position. It is going to be your Korean Protoss player from Team GP. It is the one, the only, Stephen Curry. And spawning in the bottom right hand corner of Berlingrad LE, we have the Cranky Duckling himself. He just woke up. He is munching down as much oatmeal as possible. Is it going to be enough? It's the Peruvian Terran. It is Neo. Oh, not again. Light. Is that an early scout or is he just. Is he going to be doing something a little more devious? He's just happy to see him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never happy to see a probe in my name. Never yeah, oh my god. For nada, this probe, mate. Last game, we got one SCV kill. We'll see how many kills it gets this game. Pretty interesting here is that the bunker is thrown down. And it's actually not a part of the wall here um, for Neo. Oh my god. Yeah, no, the Rax was just kind of thrown down haphazardly. It does allow, you know, a bit more protection from this probe. Um, another thing I, I kind of noticed in this situation is I don't know if. Um, Neo wanted to take his second gas as quick as he did, but he kind of was forced to take it, I guess, reasonably quickly. So I'm assuming um, he's got something cheeky up his sleeve. But um, as we see, you know, Stephen Curry sees everything. Um, he must be feeling pretty comfortable as he throws down a cyber and likely a nexus to boot. Yeah, yeah. I also wanted to mention as well, um, I didn't really get a chance to in game number one, but it's just because things happened so quickly and then things were thrown off course because of the oatmeal and the, the kitchen was on fire. Um, but Neo, you know, uh, his TVP, it's not bad, but it does typically rely on all-ins. Like he does, whether it's one base, whether it's two base, he's a very aggressive player. Um, as you can imagine, like many other Terrans, he does not, he's not fond of the mid game or the late game in this matchup against Protoss, uh, TVP unwinnable and all that good stuff. Um, <laughs> so I'm also curious as well what he's gonna what he's about to whip out if anything special yeah indeed and assuming with his opener you know two gas it is quite an aggressive opener but we see he's only got the the three the three arm um, SCVs two in one one in the other and um well, he's probably gonna try and sneak in he's gonna see the factory but he should probably kind of already know that because you don't really spare marines off two gas guises but um be curious to see, um, you're more aware of Neo's shenanigans than me, like how he's going to go. And it looks like we could have Blink on the way from our Protoss player, quite a safe opener. Yeah, yeah, everything from the side of our Protoss player is looking pretty standard, which is why we're focusing a lot more on our Terran. And our Terran did pump, did pump out a couple additional of these Reapers. I imagine he plans to go across the map with not just Reapers, but also a couple of Hellions and, you know, get some damage done. Oh, oh god, such an awful time, he's lift up the factory! Oh. Yeah, that is pretty bad timing. Um, it, it allowed um normally that 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 adept would be 100% dead right, but because the adept actually was just slide in, he didn't finish the shade, um, because he knew he wouldn't get much damage with the firepower Terran has in the field. But it did allow him to get that adept home. So um, not a huge thing, but this early on, when your opponent is delaying their natural like this, it, it's every unit is useful. So mm -hmm. hold up, by Steven. Exactly. Now the now the adept comes all the way back home. We have the shield battery is able to keep everything alive. Even if these units do get into a mineral line, like the likelihood of them really getting too much damage done isn't that high anymore. So nicely done here by Curry. Of course, the chance isn't zero. So we'll see if Neo can get anything done as he goes across the map. And the wall isn't a wall, so maybe he can target down some workers, or maybe just dive into the main and, and try and get a scout. Yeah, the big thing's going to be this Reaper grenade here. If he can kind of. He can use it to zone out the stalkers, but he can also use it to push them away and jump on the mineral line. But as he only has one Hellion, he's just being mostly passive. We see he's going into the tanks actually, so it was just for the scout really. And um, I think we could be seeing maybe a, a two base kind of push here of these extra barracks being added on. Right? And then, yeah, we see a second tank on the way. And will it be a Raven coming from the start? 
Oh yeah, hundred percent, mate. Um, as oh. well, he's actually getting some banshees. But I was saying hundred percent when it comes to the two base push, right? We have two Raxes here. We're just gonna be sending it. I kind of want Nier to pull some boys as well. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> but um, I, I do kind of appreciate this. Again, he for the most part he has kept this hidden for the time being. Um, it's gonna be on on Kari to try and get this observer across the map to try and get some scouting information. Um, and figure out, you know, that there is no third CC. Okay, indeed, and we kind of see he hasn't put any add-ons on these extra barracks. Um, I, I, this makes me feel like he wants to catch him at quite an awkward timing. So we see he might just move out once he gets to the third tank, maybe even use the Banshee to, you know, divert forces into the main, and then hit the front, or either hit the front and send the Banshee to clean up. But the, it does look like Stephen Curry does feel pretty comfortable, despite there being no shield banner in the main. But good spotter observer position. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's great. It's beautiful. It's out here ready and waiting for any kind of, you know, Raven or Banshee or Drop to come into the main base. But here we go. Neo is ready to push out. Um, as you said, it is kind of an awkward timing. He's pulling only a handful of boys. As a reminder to everyone, this is a push without Stim, without Combat Shields, without anything. And oh, it gets scouted by the Observer. Yeah, no, that's actually kind of oh. a perfect... Um or well, not a perfect scout, but the closest possible you can get. So these stalkers are going to try to slow this push down. Maybe sniper SPV or two. Going to actually blink quite aggressively. I'm not sure how I feel about this slide. Oh, exactly. I mean, he risks it all. He does snipe a tank, and he actually only loses a single stalker for it. And he forces a siege. Yeah, wow. Well, actually, that, that, that is worth it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got my face. But we see, very cute here with the SCVs mining through this little gap. And he can use that as a bit of a choke point, but the problem is this position where he is now, it's so far away from the natural, he's not really threatening anything, and these stalkers are buying so much time. Yeah, exactly. Beautiful stalker micro here by Kari, slowing this down. Meanwhile, charge only needs a couple more seconds before it finishes up. It looks like the tanks will be able to siege, but uh, is it going to be enough? The, the zealots are coming in. Yeah, oh man, that flank charge does finish up, and the stalkers from one side, the zealots on top of these tanks, and that third tank coming, but there's nothing to support left. GG is called Team GP's Curry takes a very swift 2-0. GG. And mate, this is why you pull all the boys, okay? Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, but GG, well played. That was just very well executed there by Curry, just in general. I was, I was very impressed with how he was able to read the scenario and his responses, not just in game, in game 2, but also in game 1. Yeah, we kind of see him. Um... I guess a lot of it was on Neo because he was the one that deviated away from the, the meta, the norm. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it felt like he... It, I'm not sure, it didn't really feel like um, Curry was very affected, but he just played his standard, you know, sta standard safe opener and he just got a good scout in game number two as well. But um, I'm not sure if Neo could have hit a little bit faster with his timings, but mm -hmm. it just felt like they didn't really have the firepower um, to kind of catch Curry off guard. Yeah, yeah, like, I, I can understand a lot of the rationale behind it, you know, like, you do get across that pretty quickly, like, it was really cute, you pointed it out yourself, like, the SUVs were there to mine out the minerals, so you can get into the natural faster, but a lot of it did also come down to the fact that Curry saw the army coming out, so he was able to slow it down so heavily. Obviously, if that didn't happen, then we could be looking at a very different game, but, um, alas, Curry did scout it. Uh, <laughs> so, oh. Yeah, it feels, feels bad. but not to take anything from Neo though, because Curry is very, you know, Team GP is, is one of the, the top teams for a reason. He's a very good player, so um, mm -hmm. um, unfortunate for Neo, but I'm also kind of curious to see how deep in Curry can actually get. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll have to keep an eye on him as we move through this bracket of light. Oh yeah, and speaking of the bracket, I want to direct everyone's attention to it. Exclamation mark be in the chat if you want to have a look at the bracket yourselves, because my oh my, this jack this jacket? What this bracket is looking quite juicy, mate. Oh my god. We already see a lot of players advancing to the second round. 